and welcome back to the Amateur Radio FCC General License class. Uh, in the early part of the 20th century, uh, magazine articles were published everywhere about uh, and, and gave instructions on how to build uh, simple wireless sets that could be used to communicate, uh, communicate with uh, operators uh, around the world using Morse code. Uh, and today, uh, it's still possible to find such instructions. Uh, the equipment's changed somewhat, uh, but you can still homebrew your own equipment. Uh, there are even kits available, uh, such as this uh, software-defined uh, radio uh, that could be had for around $90. Um, or this little QRP kit uh, that comes from China uh, that can be purchased for as little as a couple of bucks. Um, the instructions are kind of... Uh, difficult to follow but you know once you do you have something that actually works and you can communicate uh, with really low power just about anywhere in the world. As a general class uh, license holder uh, you're permitted to build such kits and uh, uh, even invent your own um, on the uh, higher frequency bands or the high frequency bands. Um, so are you ready to learn? Well let's get started. This is the Amateur Radio General Class License Course, Lesson 1, Part 2. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra. That's K-E-2-G-S. This section covers uh, sub-element uh, G1 and Commission's Rules. Uh, which uh, there's five exam questions out of five groups of a total pool of 64 questions and this covers the uh, general license question pool uh, for uh, 2019 to 2023. Uh, G1C uh, covers the transmitted power uh, regulations, uh, data emission standards, and 60 meter operation requirements. Uh, G1D is uh, volunteer examiners and volunteer examiner coordinators, uh, temporary identifications, and element credits. And uh, G1E is uh, controlled categories, repeater regulations, 30 party rules, ITU regions, uh, automatic control of digital stations. So let's dive into the transmitter power regulations, uh, data emission standards, and the 60 meter operation requirements. So in the 30 meter uh, band, 200 watts peak envelope power output is the maximum transmitting power an amateur station may use on 10.140 megahertz. And again, this information comes directly from the AARL uh, band plan. On uh, the 12 meter band, 1500 watts peak envelope power is the maximum transmitting power an amateur station may use on the 12 meter band. Um, you, could, you could fry eggs with that kind of power. I mean, a typical microwave uses 1500 watts to cook food, so that gives you an idea of how much power is involved. Two point eight kilohertz is the maximum bandwidth permitted by the FCC radio uh, rules for uh, amateur radio stations transmitting on the upper side band frequencies and a 60 meter band. And to give you an idea, you know, the normal voice range is somewhere between uh, 0 and uh, 3 kilohertz. So it's well within the voice range. Only a minimum amount of power necessary to carry out the desired communications should be used, and this applies to transmitter power on every amateur band. Although typically most people just leave their radio at 50 watts or 100 watts or whatever the default is, uh, we should really cut back and, and be conservative and only use the power required. 
1500 watts uh, peak envelope power is the limit for a transmitter power on the 28 megahertz band or 10 meter uh, for general class uh, control operator. 1500 watts uh, peak envelope power is also the limit for a transmitter um, on the 1.8 megahertz band. Three hundred baud is the maximum symbol rate permitted uh, for uh, RTTY or data emission transmissions on the twenty meter band. So this question, if you know, can answer this or remember this question, or probably you know get the rest of them correctly. Um, three hundred baud is the maximum symbol rate permitted for RTTY or data transmission at frequencies below 28 megahertz. You know, up in the uh, higher bands, uh, higher frequencies, you're able to fly. Uh, so uh, 56 kilobaud is the maximum symbol rate permitted for RTTY and data emissions transmitted on the 1.25 meter and 70 centimeter bands. Twelve hundred baud is the maximum symbol rate permitted for RTTY and data emission transmissions on the ten meter band. Nineteen point six kilobaud is the maximum symbol rate permitted for RTTY and data emission transmissions on the two meter band. Is there anything other than a dipole on a 16 meter band, you know, such as this uh, Yagi described here? Uh, you need to keep track of the uh, gain of that antenna, and they could just simply be, uh, you know, copying or or uh, keeping the materials that uh, came with the antenna that describes the gain. Yeah, you know, one of the neat things about being an amateur radio is that you're able to be uh, creative. So suppose you come up with a new type of protocol for data transmission. Uh, that's fine. You can do that. But you have to publicly publish the protocol uh, before you can use it on the air. And because uh, 60 meters is kind of a special band, you know, with the, the five channels, uh, the uh, effective radiated power of 100 watts peak to uh, envelope power uh, with respect to the dipole is the maximum power that we can use on the 60 meter band. So what is peak envelope power or PEP? Um, it's basically a measurement that's specified by the uh, FCC rules that regulates the maximum power. So if you can see in the, the diagram there, or the, the waveform, uh, it looks like an envelope. Uh, it's, everything that's contained within that envelope is what the power is. In this section, we're going to talk about volunteer examiners, uh, volunteer examiner coordinators, and temporary identifications uh, and credits uh, for the test that you take. As a general um, licensee, uh, if you can demonstrate that uh, you once held a, a, a general advanced amateur extra license that wasn't revoked, uh, you can receive partial credit uh, for the elements uh, represented on an expired radio license. That said, just don't let your license ever expire. So the rule of thumb is that uh, you may administer an exam one level down from where you are, with the exception of being ex an extra. When you're an extra, you can administer an extra exam. But as a general class uh, operator license holder, you can only administer the technician uh, exams. So unlike uh, when you get your technician license, you have to wait for your license to appear in the database. 
uh, when you get your general class license, you immediately get privilege and you can operate on any general uh, segment uh, as long as you uh, append your call sign with a, a slash uh, AG. So if you're administering a technician license uh, exam, you have to have at least three general class uh, license holders uh, that have a VE accreditation or uh, higher accreditation, such as an amateur extra, uh, in order to uh, facilitate that exam. Again, uh, FCC general class or higher license and a VEC uh, accreditation uh, is necessary in order to administer uh, or be an administering VE uh, for technician license exam. As we discussed earlier, uh, once you pass uh, your uh, exam for the general class, you can immediately start using the privileges as long as you s give your call sign and then say slash AG or slant AG. Either one is acceptable. It's so easy to become a, a VE, or a, a, you know, all you need to do is uh, read the volunteer examiner's manual. Uh, and once you're accredited by a, a volunteer examiner coordinator, um, you're good to go. Even non-U.S. citizens can be an accredited uh, VE or volunteer examiner as long as you hold uh, uh, FCC granted amateur radio license of uh, general class or above. Uh, uh, completion of examination or a certificate of successful completion of examination is good f or valid for 365 days. While there is no uh, age limit for having an amateur la uh, radio license, a uh, volunteer examiner must be at least 18 years old. Um, an applicant must uh, pass a current element 2 exam in order to obtain a new general license after a uh, previously held license is expired and the two years grace period has passed. Uh, this brings us to the uh, control category, uh, repeater regulations, third party rules, uh, the International uh, Telegraph Union regions, and automatically controlled digital stations. So if a third party's uh, amateur license has been revoked and not reinstated, it's, uh, they're not allowed to uh, participate in uh, stating a message over a amateur station. So a 10 meter repeater can retransmit a uh, 2 meter signal and be controlled by a technician class operator, but only if the 10 meter repeater control operator has at least a general class license. So whatever station's initiating a contact, it has to be under uh, local or remote control. Um, if it is required to uh, conduct communications with a digital station operating under an automatic control outside the automatic control band segments. Your radio is all about not causing harmful interference. Uh, so a licensed uh, amateur radio operator uh, has to take specific steps to avoid harmful interference with other facilities such as FCC monitoring stations, um, using uh, amateur services as a secondary station or secondary uh, privilege, and stations transmitting spread spectrum emissions. So we're considered uh, kind of ambassadors when we're talking over the, the radio to other countries and stuff. Um, we're only supposed to be relating amateur uh, radio comments or remarks of personal character or messages relating to emergency or disaster reliefs.
Does an amateur radio operator, particularly general, who's uh, capable of reaching out and uh, going further, uh, you need to know where the boundaries are. So the boundaries of Region 2 include uh, North and South America. So because the 13 centimeter band is uh, within the Wi-Fi area, uh, we're not allowed to contact or communicate with non-licensed Wi-Fi stations, uh, such as commercial. Due to the nature of uh, spread, uh, spread spectrum uh, transmissions, because it goes from one frequency to another, uh, the power output is limited to 10 watts uh, peak envelope power. So digital modes apply to uh, the same rules as the rest of our communications in that uh, they can't be encrypted or hidden by different codes. So as responsible uh, amateur radio operators, we should avoid transmitting on the bands that, uh, or the frequencies that uh, the beacon stations use. Uh, the beacons are there so that we can assess uh, the propagation on a given day and transmitting on those frequencies defeats the purpose. So typically frequencies above six meters uh, we're given in latitude and we're able to uh, control or automatically control uh, stations uh, in the distance uh, transmitting RTTY or data emissions uh, so that uh, they can, we can control them effectively. This concludes uh, Lesson 1, Part 2. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's lesson. If you like this video, please indicate by clicking the like, uh, like button uh, below. Uh, you can also uh, can leave any comments or questions that you might have, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, you're invited to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified of uh, new updates whenever uh, they're published. Uh, my goal is to create one video per week, uh, but this may be overly ambitious because, uh, you know, I do have other obligations such as family, work, and church, um, and also the holidays are coming up. Uh, so, you know, I'll do my best to, you know, keep, keep up with my goal, but... Um, you know, my best may be all I can, uh, all I can offer. Um, until next time, have a wonderful day in the amateur radio neighborhood and uh, never stop learning.